Hi there, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this middle purple seascape and how to reflect what's going on in the sky into a river. So in this video you will be able to paint along with me and see how I did it and hopefully you can create some beautiful purple seascapes yourself. So let's get started. So we're using a very limited palette for this painting. We're going to use French Ultramarine Blue and Quinacridone Magenta and that's going to make up the majority of the purples for this painting. And I'm going to be mixing that with some Tinting White which is also sometimes called Mixing White. I'm going to use this purple. Now this purple is very very dark and when you add white into it, it almost goes grey and so it's a really good colour for darkening up the purple that we're going to make. We're going to use cadmium yellow medium and that's going to be for those bright little orangey highlights which I'm going to mix with the magenta and then just a little bit of titanium white for those brightest areas and that's all the different colours we'll be using in this painting. So as always we start with a little sketch. I've done my little horizon line there and so there's my little horizon line there and that's where the sea is and then there's a bit of land here and then there's some hilly bits here in the river. And I've just very lightly marked out where some of my cloud highlights are going to go but I probably will end up painting over those it's just to give me some guidelines. And we're going to mix up our purple first. So we're just going to take our ultramarine blue and our magenta and mix that together to make a lovely purple colour. So we'll mix up a bit more of that colour there. We're going to add a bit of white in there. So most of the time I'll just be using the ultramarine blue and the magenta with a bit of white, pushing it around, and we'll add a little bit of yellow for the little accent bits. But we don't want to mix the yellow in with the purple or it'll just dull our nice bright purple up. So I'm starting off with a flat brush. This is a number 10. And I'm going to mix quite a bit of white into my purple and we're going to start down the bottom of the sky first because I want to make sure that I get enough light in the bottom of my sky. With these little canvases I like to paint right around the edges so that the painting goes all the way around. Now as I move up in the sky I'm going to add a bit more of the purple and I know I want a few little light areas coming through here so I'm just putting those in to remind me where they're going to go and I can push the colour around by adding a bit more of the magenta and adding that in, just brightening up the colour. And then I can go back to more purple. So we're covering up our white canvas and getting a general idea of where we want everything. I've just added more ultramarine blue in there to get a darker colour. I 
putting some more of the light in. Just making sure my edges are done. Now I've washed off my brush a bit and I'm just going to work from the bottom up and I'm just going to smooth out those transition lines a bit. So I'm going to get my mop brush which is a number 14 and it's just a big very soft fluffy brush and I'm just very lightly smoothing out some of those lines. Now I don't want it to be really really smooth because I want some of this variation to make it look a bit more interesting and I'm just going to wipe my mop brush on the paper there to get rid of any excess paint. So I've mixed some of my purple here with some of the purple that I've mixed. So this is the tube colour and this is the purple that I've mixed up myself from the ultramarine blue and the magenta and this just dulls the colour a little bit. And I'm just going to go along the horizon line here with this colour. Because this is just the base coat, I'm not going to worry too much about getting my horizon line perfectly straight. I'll do that in the next bit. I am going to use a slightly damp, flat brush here. And I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit so the line's not quite so harsh. So when you want to put in a reflection of what's going up in the sky down in the river here. You've got to think about where the colours in the sky are going to be in the river. So furthest away is actually closest to the river down here. So you'll have your paler colours here and you'll work in from the dark here and your pinks in the middle. So that's how it's going to transition through. So again, this is only the base coat, so I'm following this base coat, but when I do my second coat on the sky and refine areas of light, then I'll add those bits of light into the river as well. And again, I'm going to start with my light colour. And I'm going to start down the bottom here. And then... Just work through the colours that I used in the sky. You don't have to be super tidy or anything and I'm also going to do the bottom of this painting. And again I'm going to get my little mop brush and just very gently smooth it out just a little bit not too much. So now we're going to do a base coat on here. So I just realized that I hadn't hit record properly when I mixed up this grey colour so I'm going to show you how I did it again. So um, we're making this kind of grey and I actually need a darker grey than this now for the next bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our tube purple and we're going to put in some yellow and you get a greeny colour. And then we're going to put in a bit of the magenta and a bit of the ultramarine blue. until you get the colour mix that you would like. Now once you've got your dark mix, 
you can add in some white. And I just added a little bit more yellow in there. So you can just push around the colour until you get the colour that you want. So I'm going to use this dark mix here. I put a little bit more of the yellow in it to warm it up a bit more. And a bit more of the magenta. So it's a purple, but it's a grey purple. I'm going to be using a fan brush. So this is a number two fan brush. And I'm going to put this on here. is so small that my pan, fan brush is actually too big for that so I'm shifting to a flat brush which is number eight so you just use whatever feels comfortable You want your river to be smaller at the top and be bigger at the bottom to give that sense of distance. I have a little bit of shape going on so as it curves around So when these bits go in, this bit needs to go out so it looks like the river is curving. And this doesn't need to be a straight line because it is the hills and the little hilly foreground bits. I'm just going to pick that up and carry on. on the edges there. So I'm going to let that dry. Now you can see I've ended up with a fingerprint here and that's because the paint's not dry before I picked it up. So. Just be careful when you're picking it up, if you're going to paint the edges, that you don't do the same thing. You might want to dry off the top before you move on to the next bit. Paint this guy doing the second coat and putting in a bit more detail. And again, I'm going to start with my light colour here. And I'm going to put that light colour back in where the clouds were as well, just to remind me where they were going. The paint's a little bit dry, so I've just added a little bit more water in it to get it moving. And then I'm going into 
back into those other colours that we mixed, the pinky purpley colour. And just transitioning the colours as we go up. And adding more ultramarine blue at the top there. And I haven't washed my brush in between picking up those colours, but I am going to wash my brush now that I've got the dark on it. And I'm wiping most of the water off, but not all of it. I'm not completely drying the brush, so I'm using a damp brush. Add a bit more white into the bottom part of the sky there. So you want your lightest part to be down the bottom, then it gets darker as you move up. So I've put some of that white on there, and now I'm going to switch to a filbert brush. This is a number eight. And I'm just doing little circular motions for the clouds. I'm just smoothing it out a little, fading out the edges a bit. And I'm going to use my flat brush to just add a bit extra paint at the bottom of the cloud and to just flatten the cloud out a little bit. I'm going around the side there. Now I'm going to get my mop brush again and I'm just very gently flicking up on those clouds and then I'm going to go straight across. Now sometimes you'll get little hairs coming out of your mop brush. If you have trouble getting them off then just use a stiff bristled brush and you can flick them off and lift them off. So I'm just making that white down the bottom a bit hazier. So I'm coming in with some more of that very pale pink that we made. in my filbert brush and I'm going over those clouds again and I've wiped most of the paint off my brush with paper towel and I'm just dry brushing those edges. And haze them out a bit. A little bit more paint to my brush for this bit here.
So I'm now going to make sure my horizon line goes nice and straight. So I'm going to measure that. Just so I know that it's going to be nice and straight. And I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape. We're going to put in a bit of a orange, very light highlight in this sky here, just warming it up a little bit. So we're going to make that with our white. You want plenty of white in there. And a little touch of yellow and a little touch of magenta. I'm going to have to add lots more white to that. So I get some more white and just add a little bit of that colour in there. So a nice pale colour. Then you've got a bit of variation there that you can play around with. I'm going to wipe my brush on a paper towel so I can get a nice crisp edge on it and then pick up a bit more of that paint we just mixed. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of this colour to brighten the sky. Now I've just taken off all the paint and I'm just smoking that out a bit. And put a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of that highlighting the bottom of those clouds. A little bit of this goes a long way, so you don't need a lot of it. And I'm going to grab some of my pale pink that we made down the bottom here. I'm just going along the horizon line a bit. I'm going to wipe the paint off it again and just smooth it out. Just added a bit more white in there because I just wanted to lighten it up a little bit. If you get it starts getting a bit pale further up, you can just add a little bit more pink in. So I'm pretty happy with that at the moment, so I'm going to take the tape off here. And I'm going to get my flat brush, my number 8, and this is damp, so this is a damp brush, it's not wet, it's just damp, and I'm just going to go along the horizon line there just to smooth out that harsh line a bit. Now we are going to be 
repainting this bit anyway but I don't want a harsh line there because that's going to catch light and show a harsh line when the painting's finished. I'm going to use my little bit of tape that I took off from the sky and I'm going to put it up here so that I can still get this horizon line straight when I do this bit again. So I'm going to use a flat brush. I'm just going to use my number eight. I'm going to go back to this pale grey we made earlier and I'm going to put that back in. I'm going to dry that off again so that I can then put the sea in. So I'm going to use my bluey purple colour that I've just dulled a tiny bit by putting some of the tube purple in from up here. And that's going to be for my sea. And this is where the masking tape is very useful because you want that line to be straight at the top where the sky meets the sea, but it doesn't, but I don't want it straight at the bottom here because this is the sand. I'm going to grab a little bit of my purple here and I'm just going to flick in a little bit of colour for the sea and I'm going to grab a little bit of my pink that we made, my purpley pink. You don't want very much detail in this bit but I just want a little bit, so I'm just getting some of that very light colour. And this will just be little foamy bits. So it's not white, I'm not doing white foam, I'm doing that pale pink foam. And then we'll take off the masking tape. And again, I'm using a damp brush, not a wet brush. Uh, being a bit careful because I don't want to wreck my foam. I probably should have done this bit first before I did the foam. Got a little bit of colour up the top there that I didn't want. So I just wet my brush and got rid of that. I'm just hazing out that line a little bit. Okay, so I've dried that off now and now I'm going to go into the grey that I've got here and I'm going to push it a little bit pinker and a little bit paler. And I'm just going to do a little bit to show the variation in the colour. And I could even use a tiny bit of this colour here, not too much of it. And then I'll, I'm just wiping the paint off my brush and spreading that out. And it's just the light on the sand. And this little blob here is a bit bright, so I'm just going to go over there with a little bit of the pink. Again, just wiping the rest of the paint off my brush and smoothing it out. So it just gives a little bit of variation to that grey and shows a bit of light shining on it. Now we're going to go in and do our river again. 
So we're going to go and grab our flat brush. We're going to go in with our pale pink. And we're not going to worry if we go over where the dark bits are. Because that's not a problem. And get some of the dark pink. And so we're basically just doing what we did before. We're just making the colour richer by going over it. bluey colour in the bottom. I'm going to make that colour a bit more purple so it matches what's going on up there better. I'm going to smooth out this little transition line here too because you don't want hard lines in it. And then just have a look and see where you'd like a bit more light or a bit more pink or a bit more dark. And now I'm using the flat brush still. And I'm just making little lines. And you want your lines to be horizontal. You don't want them to be on an angle or crooked. They need to be nice and straight. And we can come through later and put a bit more detail in if we want. Now I'm going to get some of this yellow colour now and reflect that down in here as well. Wiping some of my paint off there. So you're reflecting what's in the sky. So I'm looking at my clouds and thinking how that reflection would go without too much detail because it's, it's not a big painting. And I'm just going to run some of that lighter colour underneath it. it needs a little bit more pink in it because the water reflections will be deeper colours, be richer colours than what's in the sky. Okay, so now we can move on to our foreground again. So we're now going to come and redo this foreground. So we're going to use this dark colour that we made for the foreground earlier. And we're just going to go in and repaint over that area. I'm going to leave some of the under coat showing through to just get that little bit of variation and I'm going to do more of the second coat towards the front so it's a bit darker and let some of let more of that undercoat show through in the distance part 
it just get, gives that bit more feeling of distance. And you're shaping your river at the same time, so have a look at your river and how you want it to flow. And you want to keep these bottom parts that are coming into the river flat. So I'm being careful to get those bits flat so they're not curving or wobbly. going to take some of the water off my brush so I wanted to shape the river here but I don't want it as dark so I've washed off my brush and put a bit of water on it I'm actually going to use my tissue and take some of the colour off there but I can still use that paint to shape little sides as well. Now I'm going to get some of my magenta and I haven't got anything else in it it's just magenta at this stage and I'm just popping in a little bit of colour. Now I'm going to wipe my brush with the tissue and this will dry dark you won't be able to see it a lot but it just gives a little bit of variation and I can grab some of my ultramarine blue and do the same, it's just little shadowy bits and where the light is catching but this is the dark foreground so we don't want lots of highlights in here and I'll show you what that looks like when it's all dry just gonna while I've got that colour on, just make sure I've done the bottom there. So I'm gonna dry that off and you'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna bring that closer. And you can just see little variations. So it just makes that ground a little bit more interesting. From a distance you can't really tell that it's there but when you're looking at it in person you can see it but it's very subtle so now we're going to do a bit of the grass because this is actually a grassy hill I'm going to try and do the grass with my little fan brush because my other one was too big and this one is a stiffer brush too so it'll make the grass better so I'm just getting some of my um, dark purple that we used in this background here. And I don't want too much paint on my brush. And I'm just going to push up. So I'm just touching the canvas. And I'm just pushing up with my brush. Now if I want some finer if I want some longer grass, some finer grass up the top there, I can get my rigger brush or my liner brush. This is a zero, so it's a very fine brush. And I need to um, water my paint down quite a lot for this to work. And then you can get some lovely fine lines. So I don't want them too big. 
I think my head's not getting in the way. And I'm angling them into the picture a little. I'm not putting them everywhere. That just gives that suggestion of the grassy hill in the background. So I'm going to put some highlights in the river here and I'm going to use my flat brush and I've made sure it's got a good tip on it and I'm just touching the canvas. And again, you want to make sure those lines are straight. This one here is not translating straight to me, so I've wet my brush down and I've just taken it out. I'm thinking I might like a bit more of this colour in here. It's not quite dark enough I don't think so I'm just going to put some of that on my flat brush as well some of my magenta and just a little bit and I'm smoothing it out with my finger so it's not harsh lines just to put a bit more colour into that water so I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to go in with a few little bigger grasses, if that makes sense. We're going to go in with some bigger grasses along here. So I'm going to use my dark colour that we used in here for a start off. And again, because I'm using the liner brush, I need it fairly watery so that it will give a nice smooth line. And these are the foreground grasses, so we a little bit random, but also giving that suggestion of the grasses moving into the picture, so it leads your eye in. And I'm going to do some on this side as well. Make sure you carry on going around the sides. So I'm also going to use my liner brush with some of this paler pink colour and I don't want too much of it I just 
want to give a little bit of a highlight to some of that grass. And then I'm going to get some of my magenta there. And I'm just testing my brush on the side. It's a bit thick, so I need a bit more water. It's getting a better consistency. So it's just the light that's catching those little grasses in the foreground. And if you do find that you've got a bit carried away with the lights, just go back with your dark. Just make sure you're getting nice fine lines. Because even though I've just used that paint, it does thicken up quite fast for um, the liner brush. So there's our purple sunrise with the sunrise reflecting in the river. And all I have to do now is sign my name on it. So I hope you painted along with me and found that a fun little painting to do and learned a few little skills along the way. And happy painting everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.